What is going on YouTube? One on the XM here. Today, as you can see, I am not on either of my super bikes. I am actually on a 2017 Ducati Scrambler Cafe Racer, or as I just like to call it, the Ducati Cafe Racer. This bike is actually my fiance's. You may have seen it in many of my little videos. You may have also seen it in some uh, Hebs videos. So today I'm actually going to do a review on it. I've had this bad boy for just about, man, I think two years now. Maybe a year and a half, somewhere around that. And this is really the second or third time I've actually ridden this thing. I, um, when she first got it, I actually took it uh, for a little sprint up Mount Lemon and back again. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, that time, the bike felt great. Um, you know, it's got a lot to get used to because it's not a, uh, <laughs> it's not the type of performance I'm used to. Speaking of performance, the specs on this thing, I know very little about. <laughs> I do believe it's a 803 cc motor which uh, you know Ducati never doing a exactly 800 exactly valves or anything like that so this falls suit much like most of the other ones this chick can't freaking drive I believe this 800 cc motor puts out around 90 maybe 85 ish horsepower so you know it's it's kind of low it really is and you can feel it it doesn't really have the giddy up that i am most certainly accustomed to however as she says it is a nice little scoot scoot it is exactly that it is rather light i honestly don't know what the weight of it is it just feels light you can definitely check that out yourself you get some petrol. Ah, there's a fucking thing. Now it's all nice and gassed up. Let's get her on the road a little more. Yeah, the engine braking that this bike has when you roll off the throttle is actually pretty strong. And then the, uh, you know, I, I haven't messed with it enough to see if you can go through the menus to get that engine braking to calm down. Uh, I, I kind of don't believe that that's an option. Because this is a bike that's really just meant to be, um, I guess, I almost said intro, but it, it kind of is into the Ducati world. It's meant for people that want to take a bike and then just really customize it as well. And it has a lot of character right out of the box. It's one of the better looking cafe racers that are out. Although it does have some competition now with the um, with some of the new Triumphs that are coming out. The BMW 9T or something, whatever the hell it's called, something like that. Those bikes look really freaking cool. Uh, they're about the same price range, like 12, 15 grand-ish. Uh, she actually got this one for a steal. It was a demo bike up at uh, another dealership in Scottsdale. And they they hooked her up. It took a lot off for something that had three or 400 miles on it. So uh, she got a hell of a deal with it. But the styling of this, I'll do a walk around. It It's really funny because we'll go to coffee and cars or we'll go to different shows and everything 
and people will look at my bikes and go, oh, cool. <laughs> walk away from that would be the end of it. But then they'll come to this and be like, oh my god, it's so cool. It's so retro looking. It's, they, they love this motorcycle. And rightfully so. It's a really cool bike. It's different uh, than you normally see. And it really grabs people's attention. Oh my gosh, truck is going not the speed limit. It's rather annoying. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely noticeable in a crowd because it is unique. It's got these nice bright gold rims that go with the black paint. Uh, she does have some plans in the works to change these clip-ons to kind of kind of rotate these down so they're down and back a little more so they get that more of uh, that retro cafe racer feel a little more aggressive uh, she probably also changed the side mirror she's not a fan of these mirrors uh, they work for the bike again out of the box you can't ask for a better machine straight away especially for if you're a newer rider this bike has got everything you'd want it's comfortable it's very comfortable as you can see I'm not straight up but I'm pretty damn close to upright the seat is rather thick and cushy it kind of pushes your butt forward a little bit which kind of gives it that little aggressiveness but not too bad so the riding position on this is is very nice very comfy very relaxing so this bike comes with a uh, slip-on Termi exhaust, I'm not going to say the whole name, Termignoni or something like that. Probably go with the full, give it a little more sound, it's a little quiet. It also open her up a little bit. You kind of want to pull as much power out of this as you can because, again, I think it's a little underpowered. If they'd have, if they'd have bumped it up to around 100, but again, a newer rider or someone that just likes to cruise, and still have a little bit of fun you can't beat this package right here until you get behind a titan that's barely doing the speed limit and ruining any and all fun i could have possibly had on this road this morning as i talk about the weight i don't know what the actual wet or dry weights are i, I feel like that's stuff that people can look up but as far as how it feels uh walking it pushing it or anything like that it feels light and once you get going it really feels like it to me it almost feels like a little toy uh, almost not quite a moped but like a mini bike like that kind of feel to it however it's definitely got more power than a mini bike or I don't know some of you guys I've seen some mini bikes that are pretty ridiculous so it might not be <laughs> This doesn't have an auto uh, auto blipper or quick shifter or anything on it, so it is, you know, back to that old school feel of having to clutch every gear change up and down. You got to rev match yourself, and you know the the basics that you should know how to do anyways. I've just been spoiled. Hey, so I like to get my hands on. Um, both the Triumph and the BMW's competitor to this bike and really do a three-way comparison between them. So I have a larger body of work to pull off of. But for right now, we'll enjoy this beautiful beast as we cruise on this gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. It's barely even 80. Dude, to not be over 80 or 90 degrees this time of year is incredible. I'm gonna see what this thing does. We're in second gear and pass this fucking person. Well, that was easy. So, I, you know, I've had several twins. Uh, granted, they've been the 11 and 12.99 motorcycles, so. To compare them in that regard wouldn't make sense, but 
I had to go down to second gear, pass and roll on the throttle, and I hit the speed I needed to hit with, in a very short amount of time. So, as far as the pickup of this thing goes, it's very nice. <laughs> and nice in the sense that it's, it's real good. It just kind of goes, and it picks up, there's no harshness to it at all. And that's really what you're looking for in a bike that you can cruise on. Uh, or as a new rider because the power is just going to slap you in the mouth and be too much to handle and as you can see it as I rolled on the throttle it did exactly that it stayed pretty linear which for a twin uh, sometimes they have problems with it <laughs> at least Ducatis they do throw it into a turn Get somebody's turn with some little speed and see what we feel but just from that little bit it doesn't readily want to lean over it takes a little bit of effort but uh, not not enough to feel like you're fighting I always like to mess around with most bikes in, in six gear and kind of feel you know they're little they're they're, they're grunts uh, I put them in a rev range that they're, they're not really happy I'm usually in six gear most bikes are just kind of cruising when you roll on the gas or on the throttle nothing really happens I like bikes that when you roll on the throttle in six gear it it just keeps picking up and this it picks up a little <laughs> not a lot you can definitely feel it start to grumble and go but as expected it takes a little bit of effort. Like I said, the power is just so easy when it comes on. It's it's not harsh. It's not rough. It just here we go. <laughs> and I know it sounds like I'm being negative about how the power is delivered on this bike, but I'm actually not. When you take a bike and you look at it through an unbiased lens you don't look at it as what you feel that every bike should always be you kind of take it for what the bike is and who it's geared towards the power delivery of this makes sense do i wish there's more of course i'm one of those people that loves more power no matter what it is but it's not necessary this bike is i think out of the box one of the best packages you can get for styling which are really cool power which is enough for cruising around town like cruising through the city this would be awesome with the exception that Ducati has that problem where they get hot and this bike most certainly gets hot it is not immune to that L twin leg burn I am on cons with my fiance a lot and she will continuously say how her right thigh is absolutely on fire and I'm like I feel for you I've been there I know <laughs> so let me pull over here do some do some shots shot 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 shots all right so let's talk about a few other key aspects of this motorcycle the brakes I know I've the last few videos I've done, the brakes of those bikes have bothered me. So this bike actually comes with Brembo's. And they are pretty strong. Uh, they have uh, a good amount of bite to them. Again, not really the amount that I'm used to, but stronger than the last few bikes, simply because uh, Brembo's is just very touchy. That's just what I'm used to. The one thing about these brakes though is because there's only one rotor on one side of the wheel when you enter a turn you actually feel the bars move when you're when you're going straight and you squeeze it down you can feel the bike want to go you can feel the bike want to go to the side that, that's slowing down the most of the wheel like you can definitely tell that under hard braking that there's a little bit of a pull somewhere there's a dog on that bike nice so 
I noticed this. I noticed this with uh, the ABR 1100 or 1190. Uh, that one also has a single rotor. However, that one's affixed to the wheel itself, and this one's not. So that's that, that's a totally different feel. But the idea is still kind of the same. That even though it's it's central, it's you know you figure you're just gonna pull down, you're not really gonna notice it. To me, I can feel a little bit of a difference. I can feel the bike steering a little bit different when you're hard on the brakes. Uh, let's see, let's let me look at my rev. So, about 3,900 is six gear cruising at 50. It feels happier in fifth gear, which is a little over 4,000. Power really starts to pick up about 4,000. I think it starts to really go down after six, though. Because uh, the red line of this, I think it's 10.5, maybe 11. That's the only thing I don't like about these type of dashes. They're hard to tell what your rev range is. But again, not many people on these bikes are just going to be ripping around on them, going crazy. But like I said, you can. <laughs> it is possible. The bike the brakes have that bite it's not as powerful and you can if you're hard on them it actually jostles the wheel a little bit if you're not smooth with it like it'll wobble very 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 badly so one thing if you get this bike as a new rider is you're gonna have to learn how to be smooth on it which is kind of another reason why I think this is a really good first bike because it'll teach you to be smooth some might think, well, that's unforgiving and then make it dangerous on them. Yeah, <laughs> that's certainly a possibility. But you'll learn after you scare yourself a few times. I could see sitting on this for just hundreds of miles and just eating up roads. No matter if they're twisty or straight, it just doesn't really matter. They're, it's just an easy bike to ride. Here we have ridden it, around some turns. Have some straightaways for a little while. Granted, I have ridden this bike before. What are my thoughts? Well, one, I think this is a great everyday cruising, much like Hef's Z800. Uh, I feel like this is obviously, it feels less power than that bike does, but it, two totally different types of bikes. The power delivery of this is very easy very smooth you do need to rev it you do need to rev it a little bit uh, to get her really going but once she's up around just over three grand which is kind of indicative to most of the guys now that I've seen once they're around above three grand they're mostly happy and this is no different above three grand it's it's happy well the seat stock seat is very comfortable the one thing I will say about the stock seat is it's slippery. If you were to put a liner over it, you know, the seat coverings that are maybe a little more grippy, I think uh, this bike would benefit from that because on their D cell, you slide, you slide a lot. The bike itself feels light. It reacts like it's light. You can throw it into a corner. It feels though that you need to put a little more effort into it than what I'm used to. If you're looking for a cruising bike that's got a lot of character, a lot of aesthetic character, this machine is it. If you're looking for a cruising bike that you can also take on a nice road trip that has twisties and stuff like that, this is also it. This machine does a lot and it does it well. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video, this little review of this machine. Well, that's it, guys. So if you liked this video, hit the like button. If you liked it, hit subscribe. And uh, you all have a good one.